In today's very special episode, I use Megan the Doll as my next soap inspiration. I use sugar for the first time and walk you through my entire soaping process from melting my oils to pouring the soap. Watch till the end to see the cut and how these soaps turned out. Megan, the movie about a killer doll, just released in theaters today, and I decided to use Megan as my inspiration for a doll-themed box that I'll be releasing in February. Since dolls are usually sugar and spice and everything nice, I thought that this soap was the perfect one to try out adding some sugar to my regular soap recipe. A few days ago, I tested a soap that had sugar in it, and I was really surprised and amazed at how much lather that soap produced. And in that video, I asked you guys about sugar and soap, and I got an avalanche of feedback on not only how to do that, but to just do it. So that is what we are going to be doing today. And welcome to my studio. I have my recipe that I made on SoCalc printed right over here. And the first step is to mix up the water and lye and my sugar and citric acid, because that's gonna take some time to cool down. And while it's cooling down, we're gonna do the other stuff. For soap making, I use distilled water. And the price of distilled water, I used to be able to get this in Midland, Ontario for a dollar here in Calgary. I haven't found distilled water for cheaper than $2. And to this, we're gonna add our sugar and our citric acid. Sugar we're gonna be using today is a white granulated sugar. I've heard of people using soft powder sugar in their soaps, but I'm not gonna use that today. And we're gonna use a teaspoon per pound of oil. And since I have about two pounds of oils in the soap recipe, we're gonna use two teaspoons. Put it right in there with the citric and the water. And now we're going to stir it really thoroughly. We're gonna make sure that all of that sugar is dissolved because if the lye is entered before all the sugar is dissolved, that sugar won't dissolve. So we're gonna take the time to stir it until it becomes completely clear. The next stage, we're gonna be mixing in our lye and for this, I'm gonna protect my eyeballs. So what we're gonna do is put a new measuring cup and put our lye into there first. Measure out our lye into that measuring cup. And I've added a little bit more lye than what SoCalc told me to do because I'm adding citric acid, which eats some of the lye. There's a calculation for this that I won't get into here, but once I have my lye measured out, now we can pour it into our distilled water all in one go. And by all in one go, I mean very carefully, not too fast, just a steady pour. And we're just gonna stir as it goes in, just so that we can get that dispersed into the water evenly to prevent volcanoes. I've never had a live volcano happen. I wonder if that's happened to you guys. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> but it's not something you want to have happen. And so I stir gently for about two minutes to get that live fully dissolved in there. And then I'm going to set this aside and let this cool down over a couple of hours. And in that time, I will go into my other preparations. So now that our lye, water, sugar, and citric acid solution is cooling down, I'm gonna introduce you to the next component of the soap. When I have a complicated soap design, I always like to draw it out first so that I can plan it out. And this component up here is a little heart and bed that I want to stick on the top of the soap. And this one is gonna be made using melt and pour soap and I want it to glow in the dark. So I'm gonna be using some glow in the dark powder. And the way I'm gonna achieve that is through this silicone column mold. It's a really tiny heart, I know, <laughs> but I think it'll make a cute little detail. You know what's not cute? That little bit of ribbon on my shoulder there that is sticking out. I see it too, and it's annoying me as well. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Back to the video. On the soap, and this is by Crafter's Choice. It's the Heart Mini Column Mold 2014 model. But there might be some difficulty using this for melt and pour soap. So I'm gonna add some extra security to it to make sure that these two sides stay together. And I'm gonna get that melt and pour soap melted and get it poured into here so that I can have that embed ready for when the time comes. So to keep the column mold straight and to keep it as pinched together as possible, I put all these rubber bands around it and then added a chopstick so that it doesn't bend all willy nilly. And even though there is the slightest gap there, I think it's gonna be fine. To keep it upright so that I can pour into it, I'm gonna put it into this container. And that way, when I pour my liquid melted melt and pour soap, it's not gonna spill everywhere, at least that's the hope. So to melt the melt and pour, I'm gonna be using a heat resistant glass measuring cup. 
because this heart has to glow in the dark, I'm using a clear melt and pour base. This is the crystal melt and pour base that I got from Fizz Fairy. I'm just gonna cut up a bit of it using this baking cutting tool thing. This is really handy for cutting stuff like melt and pour, butters and stuff like that. I know how much melt and pour to use because I looked up that column mold to see how much soap it can contain. And now that I have a few pieces cut, I'm gonna measure this out. So I'm gonna pour this much melt and pour into this little mini hard column mold. And to melt this down, I'm just gonna stick it in the microwave in 30 second blasts. And I'll stir in my glow in the dark powder once it's nice and melted. So here is the melt and pour all melted and it's ready for me to put in that little bit of glow in the dark powder. I'm using the glow in the dark, dark blue powder. I've used the purple one and that was so cool. So I'm interested to see how much the blue will glow. I'm just gonna use like an eighth of a teaspoon. Put it there. We're gonna have to really stir to get that all incorporated, all the clumps out and everything. You guys like the spatula? I got it from the dollar store. Isn't that amazing? Such a neat little spatula. I love it. Okay, I think we have all the clumps out. Now we're gonna pour it into our column mold. Wish me luck. Oh no, I think I have to just blast it again. Really quick, man, this melt and pour stuff just hardens super fast. Okay, BRB, BRB guys. So I got all the way to the top, which is good news. And another piece of good news is that it doesn't seem to be leaking, which is excellent. I did have a little bit of extra, which I poured into this little mini heart mold. So I have a little tiny glow in the dark heart. Maybe I can use that for something, who knows. That little heart component. Done. And as that solidifies, we need to measure out our oils and butters and also melt the ones that are hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So this glass measuring cup full of shea butter and hard oils needs to melt down before I can do anything else. So I'm gonna put this in a hot water bath to get the job done. If you watched the last video, which was a vlog, I talked about my scent inspiration for this and I wanted something bubbly, fruity, definitely sweet, but also floral, because that gives me the best doll vibes that I can think of. And so when I smelled Brambleberry's Mayday, I was like, this is perfect. This smells so dolly. I love it. But I didn't have enough for my batch, so I mixed in a little bit of Wildflower Breeze and just the littlest bit of sunflower sandalwood. And these all kind of smell very similar. I think these fragrance oils definitely bring my vision to life, which is awesome. And a big bonus is that they all say that they behave well in cold processed soap. And when I'm making a soap I've never made before, you wanna use good behaving fragrance oils. For the colors of the soap, it's going to be mainly a pink beigey body, contrasting with a dark blue, which I hope to swirl in the middle, and that will hopefully mimic Megan's bow that she has. So to achieve that peachy pink, I'm gonna use a peach red mica, and I'm not gonna use too much of it so that it's a more muted beigey pink. And for the dark blue, I'm gonna be using midnight blue mica, but mix that with some superstar blue mica so that it's also kind of sparkly. And my other swirls nearer to the top, it's gonna be a cream and gold color. I'm gonna use glitter gold mica for the gold swirl, and then for the white, I'm gonna use a mix of titanium dioxide and white diamonds. My oils have just melted, so I need them to cool down quite a bit. I like soaping below 100 degrees Fahrenheit and it's reading at 141 right now. Way too hot. Usually it takes about an hour for that to cool down before it's ready to soap with. So I'm gonna just chill for a bit. So this is solidified and ready to go. So I'm gonna take off my rubber bands. And I'm hoping that it turned out okay. You never know with these column molds. and you open it up like this. So nervous. Oh my gosh. So there's that. 
And there you go. There is my um, heart in bed. <laughs> that's just gonna rest on the side of the stove like that, like a tiny little heart that's gonna glow in the dark. The details matter, guys, okay? I'm gonna have to cut down these parts here that kind of seeped in between the mold, but yeah, I think that turned out pretty good. Because we are making a small loaf, the mold that I'm gonna be using today is the 10 inch Super Tall and Skinny from Winston and Walter. My favorite soap mold maker. These are so great to use. And the soap bars that come out of the sky, beautiful. I love that you can make a little mini loaf soap if you're not ready to make those giant 20 inch long soaps. <laughs> so everything is ready to go. I'm just gonna start. We have our oils here. We need to pour our lye. I'm going to pour this into there. And then we are going to stick blend it all together. And then we're gonna pour about half into here. And this is gonna be our base color. I have to eyeball it a little bit. Is this about half? I think that's about half, yeah. I decided to change it up to this pretty in pink mica because it's a little bit lighter. And I want it to be more of a beige than a true pink. And then we're gonna put about half of our fragrance oil into here. Okay, so as it behaves in full process, we'll see. I'm always nervous about this, guys. So I'm going to pour it in because I'm always nervous about it. And we're gonna pour our pink in and it turned out to be a great beigey pink, just what I was looking for. I'm just gonna pour it in. And so far the fragrance oil is behaving as it should, which is awesome. That is a huge relief. Remember, I have sugar in this batter, guys. So I am very pleased so far, but of course I'm gonna keep going as fast as possible. And then for the remaining batter, we're gonna put the rest of our fragrance oil in. Mix it. This is gonna be our first layer of colors here. And we have three here, we're gonna do the big guy, and this will be our blue. I'm gonna put a little bit here. We're gonna put a little bit there. And then we're going to add our colors. First, the dark blue. It's this midnight blue from Fizz Fairy. And I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of lighter blue. And then I have this light gray blue sparkly stuff called Superstar Blue Mica. And I am stoked about it. Add that into there. And then I'm gonna do gold into here and i'm also going to do some glow in the dark powder into the the shimmery blue because i don't know we'll see we'll see if it actually shows up now we're going to stick blend let's pour it into our soap mold here oh i'm gonna say that this Batter is behaving gorgeously. Not just nicely, but gorgeously. Just a little bit of everything. Do our swirls. Pour the rest of this dark blue into here. So this guy has to solidify over, I usually just wait overnight, and they're usually ready to cut by the next day. But I'm so excited to see what the inside of this looks like, and I know you guys are too, so let's fast forward to tomorrow. Remember how I was trying to get a dark blue, and when it was wet, it was a dark purple? But now, it seems to have morphed into a burgundy red. Definitely not the plan, but Megan has a burgundy coat, so I think it's still it's still on theme. Let's cut this guy. 
I did a fun short where I showed the embed glowing, which I'll insert over here. And it's a pretty cool effect. I also added glow in the dark powder to the gray swirl. And I'm curious to see whether that glows in the dark or not. But another reason why I love these Winston and Walter molds is how easy it is to get the soap out. My first impression is that I think I nailed the beige color for the main body of the soap. Look how beautiful that is. So let's cut this, because I'm really curious to see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, here's the first cut. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. Not what I was planning exactly. We don't have the, the dark blue, but I will take the burgundy. Oh wow, look at that, so gorgeous. Here is the next one. Here's the inspiration and here is the soap. I think I nailed a few things and I still think it gives off the essence of Megan. <laughs> it smells so good. The soap turned out much prettier than what I was expecting. Even though the dark blue swirl morphed to a maroon or burgundy-ish type of color, I think it still works with the Megan theme. And for those curious about what it looks like when the soap glows in the dark, here is that footage right here. So these soaps have been charging for a few hours. Let's see whether or not the gray swirl glows in the dark as well as the heart. So I have them set up over here. I'm gonna close the door to the bathroom so we don't get any light. And I'm gonna turn the light off now. Okay, so we definitely have the hearts that glow very good. Even with the door open a little bit, these hearts glow so nicely. Really pretty blue color, but the glow-in-the-dark powder that I dispersed in the gray is not really showing up that much at all. Just those uh, melt and pour hearts. Wow, it's so eerie. <laughs> they glow really bright, eh? It's definitely Megan vibes. Wow, those look so cool. I'm really pumped to release a soap in February, along with a couple of other limited edition items, which I'll be showing you guys throughout the month of January. All of a doll theme, which I think my target customer really likes. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the soap. If you want the exact recipe and steps, that is on my Patreon. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. Each and every one of you are so appreciated and loved, especially my bubble BFFs right here. I appreciate your generosity so, so much. Thank you. And that's it. I hope you like this kind of video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. And until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.